This morning we're privileged to have Stefan and Satomi Sakamoto, missionaries with uh, the Evangelical Alliance Mission to Japan since, I think, 1991 uh, with us this morning. They've been part of our uh, mission family for quite a number of years now, and we continually enjoy getting updates about what God's doing in their ministry there in Japan, and uh, it's just a real privilege for us this morning then to hear as Stefan shares from us from the Word, and Satomi is going to be giving a little bit of a, a testimony about what God has done in Japan that kind of illustrates the message. Stefan? Good morning. Um, we're glad to be here, and in many ways it feels like we're coming home. We have known some of you, many of you, for many years, and you are dear to our heart. Brings joy and sometimes brings tears to be with you. We're going to be sharing about, um, from God's Word, and also about um, just one person um, from our ministry in Japan. But as we share, please rejoice with us what God is doing in Japan. And please pray with us um, throughout the months. You can sign up for our prayer letter in the back. Because you are part of our ministry there. We are connected with you. We are sent out by you. And we are in this together. So we thank you. Japan, it's very crowded. Japan's land area is only about one and a half times larger than the state of Oregon. But about 40% of the entire U.S. population lives in Japan. That, that number of people live in Japan. Although Japan is very modern and is highly advanced in technology, the people are in desperate need of Jesus Christ's love, forgiveness, and hope. Every year, over 21,000 people commit suicide. That is one suicide every 25 minutes. Buddhism and Shintoism still have strong influences on families and culture. It is a barrier to the gospel. Less than one out of 1,000 persons are uh, Christians in Japan. During our recent four-year term in Japan, God amazingly used us to lead nine adults and at least seven children to place their faith in Jesus Christ. Satomi will be helping me um, during this message, um, giving a testimony, as Dan said, about one individual in Japan. But this message can and does relate to all of our believers in Japan, all of our seekers, the contacts we have. In fact, all of the people in Japan. Their particular circumstance might be different, but we all have these unbearable times in our lives when hope just seems to be crushed. Okay, thank you. Ten weeks ago, I had the privilege of leading my brother to Christ on his hospital bed in California. Eight weeks ago, to this day, I helped him literally take his last breath, and then after he passed, closed his eyelids. This year definitely was not what I expected. It was not, un it was not usual for me, and for you too. This year might become or might already be abnormal, and challenges might come crashing into you, squeezing the hope out of you. We Christians know that there will be unbearable circumstances that happen in our lives. But we followers of Christ also have this conviction that God 
will supernaturally offer guidance during those times. God will offer guidance during those times. Whether you sense it or not, whether you believe it or not, God is there, and he's going to offer his help. Today, I'd like to look at a believer of God who had an unbearable situation in his life, and let's look at the guidance God gave him. Perhaps he thought his life would be normal, like other men in his community. But he knew that his situation was not normal, that his dreams were shattered, and his, his world became unbearable. But he had, um, let's look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. Please open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. A believer in God who had an unbearable situation in his life. Matthew 1, verse 20. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we desperately need you every day, and we desperately need you today. Would you help me, help us here to hear your voice, as it were? Would you carry us along these next few minutes? Help us to see you. Help us to see, hear Jesus. Help us to know your hope and your healing, um, even this morning. In Jesus' name, I pray. Okay, somebody's going to say it, so I'll say it. What is that missionary doing talking about a Christmas passage in the middle of summer after one of our hottest heat spells in Oregon? What does that have to do with us now, today? Well, I hope as we're going through this passage, you can see some parallels between Joseph's life and his human predicament and Hours. There are times when it's unbearable. I hope you can see, you can hear our need, his need for guidance. And especially, I hope you can see the parallel that the character, the guidance of God back then, 2,000 years ago, can be the same as it is today. God is with us. And if we open our ears and we're humble and learners, we can know his guidance. God is with us. Isn't that really uh, the theme of this chapter? They shall call him Emmanuel, God with us. So let's dive into this verse. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. Joseph had an unbearable situation in his life. Let's look at his situation. Let's find the background, the backdrop for this verse. Joseph was planning to break his engagement to Mary. 2,000 years ago, in that culture, engagement was a legal public ceremony. It was a legal public contract. And if Joseph were to break his engagement, he would have to end it legally and also publicly. Joseph wanted to end it quietly so that he would not um, embarrass Mary. But he needed witnesses. He wanted to do it as quietly as possible. If you look at the end of verse 20, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, I think we can conclude that before the angels visit, Joseph was not aware that this was a miracle of the Holy Spirit. Joseph was not aware that this was a miracle of the Holy Spirit. He knew Mary was pregnant before the wedding, but not by him. We also know that Joseph had made God and God's word a priority for his life personally and for his upcoming marriage. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So what did Joseph do? He did the best he knew how. He was going to break the engagement. 
And actually, another title for this message could be When Your Best Is Not Good Enough. When Your Best Is Not Good Enough. Joseph, his best, as far as he knew God's word, he wanted to break the engagement. So he decided to do this, to quietly end the engagement. So Mary would not be publicly shamed, or worse, stoned to death, as commanded in the Old Testament. Joseph knew he should not, he could not, continue in this situation with Mary, the young woman that he had pledged to marry. In some ways, we followers of Jesus Christ here might be like Joseph. Not like Joseph's situation. Remember, this was a a one-time-in-history miracle. But many times, we are in unbearable situations where hope seems to be lost and the very breath seems to be squeezed out of us. We don't know what to do. It might be an unethical situation about the use of our money. It could be temptations to our sexual purity. It could be so stressful, tense relationships in our marriage, family, or friends. What unbearable situations will you be put in this week? Or this year. I have at, I'd like to ask Satomi to come up and, and tell a true story about um, a contact, a friend we have in Japan that was in an unbearable situation. Misako was in an unbearable situation. Her son was bullied by his classmates in the small kindergarten in our neighborhood in Kobe. Every day, after the children were released from kindergarten, they would play in a nearby park with their mothers watching. Many times, Misaka saw her son being bullied and tried to stop the children. But the other mothers didn't take the situation seriously. Misaka appealed to his teachers and to his classmates' mothers multiple nothing changed. Misako flashed back to her own experiences of being bullied by her classmates in her her childhood, trying to run away so far in vain with her weak feet. Darkness closes in on her heart. She felt so lonely to cope with her son's problem. No one understood how devastating it was for her to see her son being treated so badly. Her heart was torn up. Soon, she developed panic attacks when she was in the presence of the kindergarten mothers and then even with other people. Her heart would break so fast that she felt she couldn't breathe. She thought of taking her son out of the kindergarten, but there was only one semester left. And she wanted her son to finish at that kindergarten. So she would come 30 minutes early to drop him off, and comes 30 minutes later, as the kindergarten ended, to pick him up so that she wouldn't have to see anyone anymore except Misako used to be a faithful attender of my biblical parenting class for two and a half years, but she regretfully stopped coming. She could not bear to be in the presence of the classmates' mothers in my class. Thank you, Satomi. Let's get back to our text, Joseph. Who is he? What do we know about him? Well, in some ways, he was different from us. He looked, he probably looked different, probably didn't look like us. Darker skin, lean, muscular, worked outdoors probably with wood and stone, probably had a beard, probably only ate two meals a day, breakfast and dinner, fruits, vegetables, 
figs, wine, cheese. Probably didn't take a bath every night or maybe once a week. I really don't know. So he probably smelled different than us. I don't think he spoke English. Probably spoke Aramaic Hebrew, perhaps Koine Greek. Probably not English. But in one in very important way, he was like us. He was a follower of God. We know in, when Jesus himself was an adult, there was a synagogue in Nazareth. Probably there was a synagogue in Nazareth when Joseph was there. But we know that um, Joseph knew the word of God and wanted to follow God. He was a righteous man. The Bible says Joseph was a righteous man. He knew God's word, and he wanted to follow God's word. What does righteous mean? Righteous, as used in the Old Testament, one of the strong meanings is conforming to the will of God. Righteous. Joseph was righteous. He wanted to conform. He wanted to shape his life according to the will of God. We know in the New Testament, Paul says we are justified by faith, and that is true. In the Old Testament, Righteous, righteousness was a description of a person's lifestyle, wanting to conform to the will of God. Um, years later, when the disciple Matthew was inspired to write this gospel, as he was also researching and talking to people about Joseph, I am sure that he talked to people who knew Joseph, the, God, the earthly father of Jesus, and they said, yes, he was a righteous man. He wanted to follow God. Joseph knew the word of God and the will of God. Joseph knew the teachings and instructions from the Old Testament. We know at least he knew the teachings of the Passover, and Joseph knew the teachings of circumcision, so he knew some of God's will. We also know that Joseph, we can conclude that Joseph knew the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22. For us, it's an obscure passage. For Joseph and his culture, it was there. Deuteronomy says that if a woman is not a virgin at the time of her marriage, um, if, the, if the town judges her, she can be stoned publicly. Joseph knew God's word, and he wanted to obey God. What was he to do? Joseph also knew that God was gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness and truth. What was Joseph to do? What did God do? God, true to form, comes in at just the right time. God offered supernatural guidance to Joseph. Through the angel. God told Joseph to marry Mary. Let's look closely at verse 20 and see, let's count the supernatural, uh, uh, the supernatural things that, jo that the angel said that also, I think, confirmed to Joseph this is of God. Verse 20, the angel knew Joseph's name. The angel appeared and knew Joseph's name. I myself read God's word, and many times I'm guided by God's word, but I have never had an angel appear to me, and I have never had an angel say my name. Have you? That's one thing. The angel knew Joseph's ancestral heritage. Joseph, son of David, for the Jew, their lineage was very important. The angel knew that about Joseph. The, Jose, uh, the angel knew Joseph's fiancée's name, Mary. It says right there. The angel knew Joseph's feelings. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The angel knew, uh, number five, the angel knew Mary's physical condition. She was pregnant. That's five right there. Let's continue. The angel continued to explain that Mary's condition was a supernatural event of God. 
and the angel gave two prophetic utterances. The angel knew that the infant in Mary was going to be a boy. For them, that was, I mean, we, many of us don't know until birth. 2,000 years ago, that was prophetic. And two, the angel told Joseph that the child would save his people from their sins. They would call him Emmanuel, God with us, God with us. Isn't that the theme, the core theme of this passage, of this gospel, God with us? And I think something happened. Some, Joseph sensed, Joseph knew that this was of God. And perhaps you've experienced this too, experienced this too. But once Joseph decided to follow the guidance of God and to obey God's instruction, I believe God gave Joseph supernatural courage and supernatural strength to obey. He decides to follow and obey. God gives him the courage. And I think while obeying, while obeying, God gave him the strength to obey. Satomi, can you come up again? And we'd like to continue the story of Misako. I missed Misako and wondered how she was doing in this difficult situation. God prompted me to invite her to our home so that we could talk one-on-one um, over a cup of tea. I texted her, but I was afraid she might not agree to come. But amazingly, she said yes, and she came to have tea with me. That was the winter of 2015. I listened intently to her as she described her son's situation and her own unbearable situation. She poured her heart to me and even shared her deep-seated fear of death. I reached for my Japanese Bible and opened it in front of her eyes to several passages. God spoke to her through Isaiah 41.10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. She asked me to make a copy of that page of the Bible so that she could look at it whenever she was afraid. She told me later that that verse helped her immensely. After that day, we decided to meet regularly at our home for Bible study and baking. We made dough together and put it in the oven and we read the Bible together. I wanted to be her friend, but more than that, I really wanted her to know how powerful and loving our true creator God is she started to know him. So I was very excited. But one day, she confided with me that she cannot be a believer until her husband dies. Because her husband was made to promise to his relatives that he and his family would not believe in any other religion but Buddhism. She looked very sad, and I felt so dismayed. But she could not contain herself. How could she? She was already drawn to this God of love, compassion, and righteousness. She started praying to him every day for at least one hour. And soon, Mikako believed the gospel and accepted Jesus as her savior. 
Now she's reading her Bible every day, and her, and her panic attack is gone. She's teaching the Bible to her daughter also, as her daughter became interested in the Bible. Misako now wants to use her life to do something useful for God. Thank you, Satomi. Misako learned to listen to God's guidance through her time through Satomi and their time together. See, God's word is supernatural guidance. God helped Misako through Satomi and through his word. But God didn't change Misako's situation. What did God do? He started changing Misako. God did not change Joseph's situation 2,000 years ago. What did God do? God changed Joseph's heart and mind. God might not change your situation but God might change you. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ here this morning, God has already started that wonderful change in your life. The Bible says, therefore, if any person is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. If you have repented of your sinful way of life, accepted Jesus' death on the cross as the full penalty for your sins and believe that God raised him from the dead after three days, you have God's eternal life in you. That's what the Bible says. Now, in Christ, the real you, deep, deep inside of you, has perfect love, perfect righteousness, a desire to follow God. The real you, deep, deep inside of you, has the risen life, the abundant life of Jesus. And that's you. God might not change your situation, but he wants to continue to change you. We believers can be confident that God will supernaturally guide us in unbearable times. Many times his guidance includes his word and his people. His church right here, so precious. Because God, because Joseph chose to follow God's guidance, because Joseph chose to obey God, really, Joseph learned of God's love and supernatural guidance. Because Joseph chose to follow God's guidance, Mary learned of Joseph's commitment to God first and then deep, deep love for her. And because Joseph chose to follow God's guidance, me and you know the Savior. Don't let it stop here in these walls. Like Greg was telling the children, tell the good news, have beautiful feet, confirm that, that you have beautiful feet. Will you accept God's guidance to you this week in unbearable times or even when it's not unbearable. If you, if me, if we accept God's guidance, we will learn of his power to change lives. Others will learn of the Savior's deep, deep love for them. And others just might know, learn of the hope and healing that only comes from the risen Christ that all may see and give him the glory. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we desperately need you every day. We desperately need you today. We thank you for carrying us this far to this moment. We want the grace to hear your voice, to sense your guidance, to be a part of your body here at Emmanuel Bible Church. Oh, help us to hear your voice and to follow you. And we thank you that we have life in Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.